Suppose we examine the correlation between participating in a trade show or expo and sales of the company. We examine a sample of 12 companies. To obtain the sample correlation coefficient, type equal sign, then correlate function, then open parenthesis, then choose the values of x as the first array, then comma, and choose the values of y as the second array, then close parenthesis. We obtain a high sample correlation coefficient of 0.9819, which suggests that there's strong linear relationship between variables x being trade show and y being the cells. Here is the scatter plot. Out from the scatter plot, we can obtain the regression line or line of best fit. The regression equation will be y is equal to 4.6172x plus 25.985. If we believe that this relationship obtained from a sample is not a result of coincidence or chance, we will likely use this regression line from a sample data for prediction or to model a linear relationship between variables in the population. But how can we judge that this is not a result of chance? The answer is to perform hypothesis tests of the significance of the correlation coefficient. What is hypothesis testing? Hypothesis testing is a process in statistics where we test the assumption about the population parameter. In our case, the population parameter is the population correlation coefficient. We only have sample data of 12 companies, so we are not able to obtain the population correlation coefficient. The sample correlation coefficient we previously calculated will be considered as our estimate of the unknown population correlation coefficient. Hypothesis tests let us decide whether the value of the population correlation coefficient is close to zero or significantly different from zero. We will make this decision based on the sample correlation coefficient and sample size n. This will help us to decide whether the linear relationship in the sample data is strong enough to use to model the relationship in the population. How hypothesis testing is done? First step is to formulate the hypothesis. We must state two hypotheses, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the hypothesis we need to be tested. It states the exact opposite of what a researcher expects or predicts. It is the hypothesis that a researcher will try to discredit. Since we expect significant linear relationship between X and Y, we will discredit it by having this null hypothesis. The population correlation coefficient is not significantly different from zero or the correlation in the population is zero, meaning there is no significant linear relationship or correlation between X and Y in the population. The alternative hypothesis is simply the opposite of the null hypothesis. It is a claim that is considered true when the null hypothesis is rejected or not accepted. Our alternative hypothesis is the population correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero or the correlation in the population is not equal to zero, meaning there is a significant linear relationship or correlation between X and Y in the population. In our case, the alternative hypothesis has two sides. Not equal to zero means either smaller than zero or larger than zero. Therefore, the alternative hypothesis is a two-tailed hypothesis test. The second step is specifying the significance level denoted by symbol alpha. Significance level is the probability of type 1 error in hypothesis testing. Type 1 error is when we reject a true null hypothesis. The correct decision should be is to reject a false null hypothesis. In our example, we will use significance level of 0.05, meaning there is a 5% probability of rejecting a true null hypothesis. The third step is to calculate the test statistic. A test statistic is a value computed from a sample data which serves as our basis for deciding whether to reject or not to reject the null hypothesis. The formula for our test statistic, which is the t-value is sample correlation coefficient r, 
times square root of sample size in minus 2 divided by square root of 1 minus squared sample correlation coefficient r. These are the types of probability distributions for test statistics. The t-test has a t-distribution with the n minus 2 degrees of freedom if the null hypothesis is true. In our example, the t-value is computed as sample correlation coefficient of 0.91892 times square root of sample size n of 12 minus 2 divided by square root of 1 minus squared of sample correlation coefficient of 0 0.91892 equals 7.36703. The fourth step is stating a decision rule. We will compare the computed value of test statistic to rejection point or critical value in order for us to make a decision as to whether to reject the null hypothesis. Because the alternative hypothesis is a two-tailed hypothesis test, then we have two rejection points. One is negative and the other is positive. Remember that we have significance level of 0.05. For a two-tailed test, we will divide the significance level of 0.05 by 2, resulting to 0.025 probability for each tail in the distribution of the test statistic under the null. We will use the table of the student's t distribution one tail probabilities. Our sample size is 12 minus 2 equals 10 degrees of freedom. Look at the rules under 10 degrees of freedom, then look at the column under 0 0.025. Do not use column 0 0.05 because this is a two tail test. We have a critical value of 2.228. The two rejection points will be negative 2.228 and positive 2.228. For us to reject the null hypothesis, our computed value of test statistic should not be in between these two critical values or rejection points. So, our decision rule will be to reject the null hypothesis if the computed test statistic is less than negative 2.228 or more than positive 2.228. The fifth or final step in hypothesis testing is making the decision. Because the test statistic 7.36703 is larger than the rejection point of 2.228, we reject the null hypothesis that the population correlation coefficient is equal to zero. The sample correlation coefficient is statistically significant, meaning there is a significant linear relationship between x and y, which also means that we can use the regression line for prediction.